This video is sponsored by Sony and I'm really excited to work with them as they've been my camera brand of choice since 2019. Hey, I'm Mark and I specialize in bird photography and with bird photography, the gear really does make a difference. So we're gonna take a look at the gear that I like to use, my favorite setup, and then we're gonna take a look at some alternate setups that are better for like an entry level bird photographer. So my go-to camera is the Sony A1 with the Sony 600 F4. With this combo, I really, it's, it's hard to believe the results you get until you start shooting with this. This is by far the sharpest telephoto lens that I have ever used. It's extremely fast, it's light, it's very accurate, and when you pair it with the A1, the 50 megapixel resolution, it, it's like a whole new level. It's almost like macro level photography if you want um, with that high resolution stuff. And it's also extremely fast at 30 frames per second. It really changes the way you can choose and cull off your images when you're done because you have dozens, sometimes hundreds of images of these birds and you can really pick the, the image that's really appealing to you. Like if you want the wings out and, and perfectly lit, you get those moments in between. Um, a lot of the other cameras don't and they just, they don't have the ability to capture those moments in between. So it's an amazing experience also to just see all these different results that you can get by shooting so much faster. Um, and then when you need a little extra reach, which you do with birds, because birds aren't always flying right up to you, I like to use the 1.4 teleconverter and that puts me at 840 and then 5.6, but there really doesn't take any hit in image quality or autofocus performance. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and it's just, I shoot a lot with the 1.4 Tele because I like to get really, really close without actually getting close and disturbing the birds. That's a, that's a big thing. You gotta keep your distance. So this allows me to do that. And then paired with the 600 F4 and the 50 megapixels, it's, it gets you right up and personal um, when you can't. So that's my go-to rig. And when I'm not actually shooting stills, I love to capture video of birds. You can learn a lot about your own technique and the birds and use all that. And my favorite rig for that is the Sony a7S III with the 200 to 600 lens. And again, a lot of the Sony gear is so easy to hold. It's small and it's light. Um, don't necessarily need a tripod to, to get what you need. The really good thing that I like about this lens, besides the optical quality, which is excellent, is this, the throw from 200 to 600. You can literally just turn a finger and be from the minimum zoom to the maximum. And that's really helpful when you're doing some wildlife photography. Because a lot of beginners have a hard time locating the, the subject in the viewfinder. And if you can back it off to 200, you can quickly find them in the viewfinder. And then when you get them, you can just do that and you're full on at 600. And it's an amazing uh, piece of tech for that. And if you're also just starting with bird photography, it's also a great lens for stills. And you can pair it with the the A1 or the A7R4 or the A92, any of those other bodies, and it works exceptional on those as well. Um, again, it's, it's just perfect for what I like to do. All right, so when I first started shooting the Sony system, the only really long lens that was available was this 100 to 400, and it's tiny, look at it. Um, even extended, it's tiny. And I had a lot of moments that were aha moments for me when I was shooting this paired with my A9 to where I literally shot it with one hand when the action was happening and it didn't fail me. And I got some of the most amazing pictures. So it's an excellent lens for that too, and especially if you're just starting or if you need some, something small and lightweight. There's also a really cool trick that you can do with it that I've learned. You can take the 1.4 Tele and attach it and kind of have a, a makeshift macro lens because it extends it quite a bit and you don't, like when you're shooting macro of insects, you typically have to stop down a lot and you lose a lot of light, but with this and then this, you don't have to do that. You can still shoot it at like F8 and have some good light. And then if you pair this combo itself with like the A1 at 50 megapixels, then the cropping ability even accentuates it even more. And you can, like if you're shooting bees, you can get in and see all the little tiny hairs on the bee's body and on their head, and it's absolutely amazing. So it's another really good lens that I like to have around. You gotta have something to carry all of this stuff around in. And 
since I'm mostly out and about all the time with the big lenses, I really like this bag. Um, the brand is Ruggard. This allows me to actually take the 600 F4 and the A1 with the lens head, of course, flipped around and have it in the bag at all times and on my back. And um, it was the only bag that I could find that allowed me to carry that. So I'll carry this in here on my back and then I'll carry some of the other gear in a smaller backpack too or in my hand. But this is uh, very crucial to have. It's always really important to make sure you have plenty of memory cards because when the action gets going, it's not unlikely to fill them. And the last thing you want is to look and say, oh no, the card full and the stuff is still happening around you. So always have plenty of memory cards. And the same with batteries, always have plenty of batteries. Um, as a minimum, I take four extra batteries and then one in each camera. So I'm going out with six batteries at a time. Um, I can swap them out in the field really, really quick. And again, you don't wanna be caught without any power for your cameras because, I mean, you can still sit back and enjoy what's happening, but you really want to capture it so you can share those stories with others. So make sure you have plenty of batteries, plenty of memory card space. And if you're out in the sun all day, it's always really important to make sure you wear sunscreen. I have to be an advocate of that. You have to really put that on. And then a hat really keeps the uh, the heat off your brain, keeps your brain from boiling and you can stay out for longer than uh, regular. And I like to carry around um, in my bag too, just some little brushes to get all the sand off, um, a cleaning cloth or two. Of course, this one is really dirty. Um, but I like the, I really prefer the lens tissues that you can get. They're like these small little tissues. They're almost like rice paper. They clean the lenses very, very well. And there'll be a lot of times when you're out in the elements when the lenses get moisture on them. So you need to be able to clean them and then, you know, on a spur of the moment time too. Um, there are a lot of tools you can use too, like on, with your mobile phones. So with birds, there are a lot of things that affect their behavior. Weather is one that really, really affects their behavior. So it's always good to have a, a really good, accurate weather app on your phone that you can constantly monitor the weather for um, approaching changes in the weather, uh, storms. Of course, you don't wanna be out in the storms unsafe. You know, if there's lightning, of course, you don't wanna be out. But sometimes light rains make the birds do different things because those light rains might wash some food into the water that stimulates a food chain on the smallest level and then all the birds come in and start feeding. So it's important to be able to monitor the weather too. And one of the most important things for bird photography is wind direction. Almost all birds use the wind to their advantage. It's all about being able to fly with as little effort as possible. So to do that, they need the wind coming at them. So if you can monitor a, um, uh, the wind direction, I use an app um, called Wind Finder for my iPhone, and it allows me to pretty much tap into any weather station almost anywhere in the world and immediately see what the, the wind direction is, um, the speed. It also does like wave height if you're near water, um, and it does it all over the world, and that's, that's invaluable because then I can immediately determine if it's you know gonna be worth my time to go out and do what I wanna do. It's always worth your time, but sometimes it's best to have all of this knowledge available to you before you go. It gives you a better chance at success and getting the images that you want. For those of you who are looking to get into this just starting, um, you can do it on a, an affordable budget. I know these big lenses are expensive and some of the higher resolution bodies are expensive, but the 200 to 600 paired with the a7 III is a great entry level kit that'll get you really good results and get you hooked on getting out there and enjoying yourself. And that's really what's important because once you get out there and start enjoying yourself, um, you'll start enjoying the gear and you just get outside and have a good time. That's really the most important part and to wrap it up, that's all of the gear that I typically take with me. Um, my go-to stuff, again, the A1 with the 600 F4 for my stills. Um, I will shoot video on it as well. And then for video, I really like the A7S III with the 200 to 600. And you can't forget the teleconverter. That's like the magic that fits in your pocket and it really extends the reach of these things and helps you get closer when you can't, which is also very important, like I said before. Don't always wanna disturb the animals and get right up on them. Until next time, I'll see you later.